Hi, if you watched my previous video, we were assembling this PCB from JLC PCB. This is a breakout board for the FT4232H mini module. Now, you could use the PCB like this, but I'd rather have something on the bottom here so that we don't accidentally short out some of the pins on the bench if you've got some wires there or something metallic. So what I've done is I have designed a little 3D printed case. Really quite a simple design. All it does is protect the bottom of the PCB. So the PCB should sit in here completely flush with this top edge here. And then there's the four bosses for the PCB with a height such that the pins on the bottom of the PCB shouldn't interfere with the bottom plate here. And then what I'd normally do is export the STL file from FreeCAD, import that into Creality Slicer, and then that's where you can set up the 3D printer settings, put it onto an SD card, and then put it into the Ender 3v2. But in an earlier video, I mentioned that I had this Creality box, and this was sent to me by Banggood. It's quite reasonable in price, $23.99, and the idea is that it allows you to wirelessly print to the 3D printer. So I thought we'd have a look at this today. So it's really quite a compact unit. Uh, there's not much to it really. There's an SD card slot on the side. Um, I think that's just for the storage when you're sending your files to it. There's obviously a reset pin because these things always crash. Uh, we've got an Ethernet port, although it does have built-in Wi-Fi. Two USB ports. I think it supports two 3D printers, but you can definitely use one 3D printer and a webcam so that you can view it on your phone. And then it uses a micro USB cable for power. Um, the rest of the unit is just made from plastic, as you'd expect at that kind of price. It's got four indicator LEDs on the front here, but absolutely no indication of what any of those LEDs do. It is described in the user manual, but at a glance you'd never know what any of these meant, so almost pointless, but I guess they're trying to save money. Uh, you know, at this price point, they do have to cut corners. $23 is extremely cheap for something to be made and shipped to you and put in a box and everything like that. So I'm hoping that this will do the job, but I fear that it may not work in the way that I want it to. It looks like you may have to use your phone and you can't just print from the slicer software, which would be sort of the ideal scenario. So we've got the box here and then also along with the package, as I said, you've got the user manual, which explains a few of the things. And then you've got two USB cables and a little adapter just in case your 3D printer has a mini USB cable, so just a micro to mini adapter. Now it does require you to install the Creality Cloud app, which I just have done, and you can install that from the Google Play Store and also from the Apple Store. So I'm just gonna use the ethernet connection since the wireless switch is just down here. So we'll plug that into here. We've got the USB cable going to the Ender 3. We'll plug that into one of the USB ports. And then finally we'll plug in a power lead. So we're starting to get some blinking lights on the unit now. And that USB cable has actually powered up the controller on the 3D printer. The 3D printer itself isn't actually turned on. But now I think we need to do a little bit of configuration on the app. So the setup's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is scan the QR code on the back of the Creality box. And follow a few steps on the app and then it's pretty much done. So not much to it. It says it's online. It says there's a SD card inserted into the unit. You do need an SD card in there. And it's also detected that there is a printer connected. So as I feared, it looks like their implementation of a useful Wi-Fi interface for your 3D printer is not what is going to be useful for most people out there. You can't just print from the software on your PC. You do have to use the software on your phone, which means that you then have to take your STA STL file from your 3D CAD software, you've then got to get it onto your phone, so you've either got to email it or send it through Google Drive or connect it to USB cable and do all that. Once you've got it on the phone, it looks like you press this button at the bottom here, uh, models, and then you add the STL file that you've just got onto your um, device. Uh, you've got to give it a name, so just call it Neon. You have to give it a category. Uh, uh, tools that'll do. Uh, turn on sharing or turn off. So if you want to share it with everyone on here, I'm just going to turn it off for now because it's just an experiment anyway. And that's about it. So then we click submit. And then under my models, 
Uh, it's got neon. It says auditing. I don't know what that means. Um, but let's see if we can actually print. So you have to use the slicer in the cloud software, which is slightly frustrating because you might have all of your settings set up on the Crowdy slicer or uh, whichever slicer software that you use on your PC. You do have to do it on the phone instead. Um, so we've got that. Click on the device and we're using the Ender 3v2. And then I'll just go through and set all the settings up. Right, so I think I've got it set up pretty much for what I need. It has a lot of the settings, but not all of the settings that you have in the desktop version of the slicer. And I can't find a way, for example, to print two of these on the same bed at the same time. So we're going to have to do it one at a time. So we'll click slice. I think we can just click print. So let's see what happens. So we'll press print. And then it says choose device. So we'll select Creality Box. And I'm not sure if it's showing up on the screen down. Loaded OK, loaded OK. It's now increasing the temperature of the nozzle and the hotbed. And hopefully it should start printing. Right, so it is printing and it's giving status updates on the phone. So it's saying it's taken seven minutes to heat up and everything. Uh, we've got about one hour 52 remaining. But it doesn't seem to have half of the adjustments that you'd normally have from the control panel on the unit. So for some reason, it hasn't done the homing properly and therefore the Z axis is slightly at the wrong level and as a result it's not adhering to the bed at all. You can see it's just printing garbage. Normally if something like that is happening what you'd be able to do is just go on the control panel here and adjust the Z offset so that it does that first layer properly on the bed. But the option is gone from here and it doesn't seem to have it on your phone app and it seems to have forgotten all of the settings while being controlled by this unit. And so I've now just had to terminate the print. It's just gone off and done something completely strange. It was trying to print off in the corner of the bed. Uh, well, it was printing fine. It was printing in the right place and all of a sudden it's just gone crazy. So I don't know what's going on. So I don't really know what the story is there. It just tried to print way off the edge of the bed even though it was trying to print in the correct general area to start with. And I'm guessing when you've got this connected up it doesn't read the usual data that it would do that has all the details about the homing and the stored Z offset and all that kind of stuff. But I went through all the menus on the, my phone and I couldn't find a way to change any of those settings. And the control panel is pretty much useless, which also means I couldn't stop the print from the control panel. I had to go to my app and then cancel the print from there. So multiple failures. Um, so yeah, this is not all that great. I'm sure the hardware is fine. I think it's just a poor implementation of the cloud software. But anyway, let's have a look inside the box. I can't feel any kind of screw hole here. And this appears to all be one moulding. So I think just this front part comes off. So I might just take a moment to see if I can get this open. Okay, so the front did come off. And I think there's a Wi-Fi antenna just glued to the top here. So we'll just unplug this UFL connector. There we go. And the should slide out, there we go. The construction doesn't look too bad at all. We've obviously got our USB connectors at the back here. We've got a DC to DC converter that's taking the power from the USB and converting it down for the SOC or whatever we've got under here. We've got our pulse transformer for the ethernet port. And a few other components underneath. It looks like we've got our flash, which is storing the software that's running on the SOC. And then everything else is hidden under this EMI can. And it looks like we should be able to just prise this off. I can see some little clips holding it in place, but it's not soldered in. So let's see if we can get the top off. So just under the cover, we've got some Wimbond SD RAM. And then we've got the SOC here, which appears to have Wi-Fi built in. We've got our RF matching components down to the UFL connector. And then the antenna, as you saw, was on the inside of the case. So one gigabit of RAM and then the MediaTek SoC. So it has a 802.11n Wi-Fi radio and a 580 megahertz CPU in there. Ethernet Fi, USB 2 host. So it's a little SoC 
probably running some form of embedded Linux on there. It takes about half a minute to boot up, so that makes the most sense. I think I've seen this chip used in some wireless access points before, so that kind of makes sense, but it should be quite a reasonable device. It looks like it's just the software that's letting this thing down. So a bit of a letdown really. The hardware seems absolutely fine and well worth the money, but they're forcing you into using that cloud software and not using it in the way which I imagine most people use it. My perfect usage scenario would be that you use the 3D software that you would normally put it into the slicer software, so Creality Slicer or Cura Slicer, and then from there, just be able to wirelessly send it to your printer and then it appear even just on the SD card there so you can then select it as a file and print as exactly as you would normally. I don't really need the fine adjustment from the phone. You just want to be able to get that data to the printer without having to faff around with SD cards all the time and moving it from your computer to the printer. There's no Windows support for the cloud software so you can't even upload it on your PC into the cloud and then print from your phone. So uh, for me that's just a big fat fail and I think we're going to look at some other software in the next video. So we'll try using Octoprint to print the same 3D printed case for the Neon and see if that works better. So I will put links to this in the description if you want to waste your money. It may suit the type of person that doesn't generate their own designs but just wants to print what's freely available on the cloud. But for me and I imagine most people this isn't going to do the job. So hopefully you found the video useful and until next time thanks for watching.